All right, we're going to install this new capacitor kit in this Sega Game Gear. You can see the uh, screen. You look straight on it. You can't really see it very well. No matter how you adjust the contrast, this doesn't really show up too good. Plus, sound is kind of tinny. So this new cap kit will uh, correct the video problem and also correct the sound. So let's take this thing apart and get this kit installed. Turn this thing off. There it is. Boop. First thing we want to do is take out these four screws to get this case all opened up. Make sure the batteries are out of it. There's a nice hidden screw right down in here as well. So gotta take the little covers off. Get to those. Get all those out. And then the last screw we gotta remove is this specialty screw right here. It takes a special bit to get it out. So let's get that crazy thing out of there now. And right here is the bit I'm gonna use. This is a special game bit that you can get online. That's used to take apart Nintendo NES cartridges and things like that. Let's put a little special screw right there. Get on there. And then we'll just crank it off and open up this case. Okay, I've got the case halves opened up. Be very careful with these small wires right here. And you see some of the capacitors already right up in here. i got to replace. There's some down here as well. Uh, this kit comes with a little map that shows all the capacitors you replace on the boards. So I'm going to unplug these two connectors here so I can totally separate these two cases without stressing these wires out too much and start working on it. Okay, I've got the two plugs undone here to lay the two case halves flat. Here's the instructions for the capacitor replacement. Pretty well uh, documented here. Here's a whole list of all the capacitors and everything. Oh, and for those of who are going to ask, this is a uh, 4.3, no, 4.5 millimeter game bit is what this is. So you'll need one of those to open the Sega Game Gear. All right, well, let's start replacing capacitors. Okay, we're going to start with the C49 capacitor right here. And basically what you do is you break away this black protective cover that's over the capacitor but make note of which side is negative and which side is positive so when you solder it in the new capacitor you get the polarity right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently rock this capacitor back and forth on the board until it breaks off. There we go. And then I'm going to solder in the new capacitor to these two existing pads right down here do that next and right there's the first capacitor installed so I'll mark that capacitor off on my list here that was C49 so I'll check that off and continue on with uh, the rest of the capacitors alrighty got the capacitors replaced took me probably about a half hour to get them all uh, put on the board so let's put this thing uh, together just uh, temporarily to see how it works before I put the screws back in. All right, got all the cap kit. Got the cap kit in there. Let's turn it on and give it a try. Cool. Looks like I can see a lot better now. Awesome. Ooh. Ah! Works pretty good. Took approximately about about an hour to modify the unit. Uh, wasn't wasn't too bad to do. What's really cool is you got all these capacitors, but you actually don't use all the capacitors. And the reason why is that there's multiple different boards. I had a version 1 board, so I replaced these capacitors here on this list. Then here's the version 2 board capacitor list that you replace. 
and then the version what they call the four board and its capacity to replace so kind of cool pretty happy with it pretty neat mod so now my contrast works just fine now so I can turn any angle I want just to contrast and see it pretty cool thanks for watching